Hello and welcome to part one of what will be a series of videos in which I attempt to emulate or copy the paintings or the painting style of uh, an old master. It's not so much a uh, tutorial but more of an investigation into old painting techniques but uh, hopefully during the process I'll be able to learn some new skills and uh, hopefully you will be able to as well. Now the artist who I've decided to investigate or sort of copy uh, their technique is uh, Hans Holbein. Uh, Hans Holbein was a um, sort of Swiss German uh, painter, sort of active during the sort of 16th century. So he worked mostly in Germany or in England. Now Holbein worked predominantly as a portrait painter, so he was painting either members of the royal family in uh, Henry VIII's uh, court or either traders or sort of well-to-do people either in Germany or in England. Now, one of my favorite portraits uh, he did was of uh, George Gieser, who was a, uh, a German merchant working in a steel yard in London. And uh, you can see it here. Now this portrait I really like because it's just, well, there's so much detail. Like everything's just been painted so crisply and clearly. Uh, the face is very, uh, detailed as well, along with all the sort of objects and small little things around him. Uh, another one which I really like as well is uh, his portrait of uh, Thomas More. Uh, see it here? Now this one I really like as well, cause especially just the way he's painted his uh, clothes as well, like his uh, silken cuffs and uh, his uh, fur and also this nice curtain behind him as well. And this is something that I'm going to try and copy uh, in my own investigations. So it's not only the sort of portrait of the face, but also the way he painted clothes and objects and things like that. Now I'm going to be getting a lot of research and information as to how uh, Holbein painted his pictures from uh, this book here, which is the, uh, the materials of the artist and their use in paintings by Max Döner. Now, uh, this book's got a lot of good information about uh, how the old masters uh, painted their pictures. And uh, this one specifically has a lot of info on uh, how Van Eyck, or Jan Van Eyck, painted his pictures, which uh, so Jan Van Eyck was sort of the kind of the master of the Northern Flemish style during the sort of um, six, uh, 16th century. And Holbein as well painted in that style. So this is gonna be very useful. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna be taking a lot of information from this, but also I'm gonna be looking around on the internet as well and other sources as well, just in case there's uh, other information that I might need. Now, the first place to start really is uh, on what surface did uh, Holbein paint his portraits? Um, now we can tell from research and all these other things that he pretty much painted exclusively on uh, wood panels. I think uh, in, when he was painting in England, nearly all of his uh, portraits were on oak. And I think in, when he was painting in Germany, it was uh, on pine wood. So with that in mind, uh, what I've decided to paint my portrait on or do my investigation with is gonna be a 12 mil birchwood ply or birch plywood. Now I decided to use birch plywood because it was uh, available to me at the time. And uh, what I, I think is very important as well that whatever board you're gonna use or whatever wood you're gonna use, um, make sure that the board itself is over a centimeter thick. Because I think anything thinner uh, will make the wood warp once you, uh, once you start treating it and start uh, applying various um, materials to it. So yeah, over one centimeter is highly recommended. I'd say like one centimeter to two centimeter thick would be fine. So uh, now I've decided which uh, board I'm going to use. The next step is to apply a traditional gesso grounding to it. I'm gonna show you how you can do that. Okay, so what we have here are all the ingredients needed to make a traditional gesso for a wood panel. Now the three main ingredients for making the gesso it's going to be uh, rabbit skin glue, uh, gypsum, 
and a titanium white pigment. Now the rabbit skin glue um, you have to make beforehand. Uh, you can either buy it in its liquid form or um, you can get it in sheets as well. But uh, I've bought it in this granulated form. See here, and what you need to do is um, soak, uh, well, for every litre, you want to soak 70 grams of the granulated rabbit skin glue in water for about eight to 10 hours. And then you want to gently heat it uh, until, uh, the, until it sort of melts and becomes a sort of consistent liquid like you see here. Now, as for the gypsum, uh, what's very important for this recipe is that this uh, gypsum um, is a sort of pure gypsum, as in it's been just dug out of the ground and grounded and they haven't done anything else to it. Um, a, a way to tell is it's called a calcium sulfate dihydrate. Um, if you're having trouble finding pure gypsum, I, I found this on eBay. Just make sure you type in calcium uh, sulfite uh, dihydrate or uh, CaSO42H2O and uh, you should be able to find it. So the tools that you'll need to mix this is uh, you'll need a uh, hot plate that I have here. This one has adjustable uh, temperature gauge but just I think a regular hot plate, hot plate will be fine. Uh, basically you just need it to um, boil some water and uh, you want to be boiling the water in a pan here in order to create a, a double boiler. Um, so for example, I want to be heating something in here. Then I just want to place this in what will then at the time be boiling water. So that's what you call a, a double boiler. Uh, you'll also need some uh, cheesecloth here and also a sort of linen rag, just any piece of linen cloth will do. Uh, what else? You'll need a little sieve as well for uh, when you're coming to mixing the zinc and the uh, gypsum in the rabbit skin glue. Also just some measuring devices as well, just so you know what's going in and how much and uh, a mixing device. Uh, as for vessels, you'll need uh, one sort of medium sized vessel in which to mix the gypsum, the uh, zinc, and the rabbit skin glue in together. Uh, you'll need another uh, vessel like this just to mix the zinc and the gypsum together. And a final vessel for putting the finished product in. I should also mention as well that uh, before you start applying uh, the finished gypsum onto the uh, board, what you want to do is uh, size the panel with uh, two coats of the rabbit skin glue on uh, both sides and uh, you want to let that dry for at least a day so it's a good idea to do that first before you start making the uh, gesso. Okay so I have all my tools and ingredients. Uh, what I have here is just some water simmering in the pan on the hot plate and uh, the first thing I want to do is mix together the gypsum with the zinc white. Now Max Adurna's recipe uh, says to mix uh, an equal part of uh, gypsum with an equal part of zinc white. So uh, what I'm doing here is just getting two scoops of um, a 30 milliliter measuring cup of gypsum and just putting that in a uh, glass vessel and then I'm just going to measure out the same amount for the zinc white. So once they're both in the jar, I just want to get my palette knife and thoroughly mix together the gypsum in the zinc whites so it's uh, nice and well combined. So what I want to do now is just measure out the same amount of uh, rabbit skin glue, so um, two cups worth from a uh, 30 milliliter measuring cup. And I want to just put that in the medium sized uh, vessel. Uh, then I just want to place it on the double boiler 
and just leave it for maybe three minutes or so or just until it's hot to the touch. Uh, you don't want to let the rabbit skin glue boil. So now I have my heated up rabbit skin glue, I want to take my sieve and just sieve through the mixture of gypsum and uh, zinc white into the rabbit skin glue. Um, I'm just using my palette knife here to break apart some of the larger chunks of the mixture and just force it through the sieve. So uh, once that's all been sieved through, I just want to very gently combine all the ingredients uh, together until they're sort of a wet mixture. But I don't want to use any sort of uh, vigorous uh, mixing motions at this point. So now I just want to take uh, this empty glass vessel here and uh, my cheesecloth. And I want to stretch the cheesecloth over the uh, glass vessel and uh, I want to take a spoon. And the idea is I'm going to scoop out some of the mixture and deposit it on the cheesecloth. And using the other side of the spoon, I'm going to sort of gently um, force the uh, mixture through the cheesecloth. Uh, so just by gently rubbing and sort of massaging the mixture through it. So this will uh, properly mix together all the ingredients and create the uh, gesso. Uh, you'll find as you're doing this, the um, the mixture will become a lot smoother and creamier. Uh, this is a good sign. This is um, this is when the ingredients are properly combining and uh, turning into gesso. So once you've um, forced all the mixture through the cheesecloth, uh, you just want to gently peel off the cheesecloth and just make sure to scoop any of the mixture from the other side of the cheesecloth into the, uh, the glass vessel. So uh, once that's all done you'll have some finished rabbit skin glue gesso and that is now ready to be applied to the wooden board. Okay so I've got my board here I've got some brushes for applying the gesso, uh, water for diluting the gesso uh, I've got the gesso right here and I also have some water for cleaning the brushes and I've got some water as well in the pan which is uh, gently simmering. Now after some time um, the gesso starts to sort of solidify or become sort of slightly gelatinous. Now what you want to do is you just want to place the gesso in the uh, double boiler and you just want to stir it until it starts to become sort of uh, sort of full liquid again but you really don't want to overheat it so take it off the heat just as soon as it's become um, liquid again. So uh, for my first application of the gesso what I want to do is take uh, this uh, sort of soft round brush here and what I want to do is uh, stipple the gesso onto the board. Now my first attempt at stippling the gesso didn't quite go to plan. Um, the paint was just uh, too inconsistent when I was trying to sort of load the brush with uh, water and gesso. So what I've done is take a, um, a little ceramic bowl here and I'm just pre-mixing the gesso with some water um, until I get a sort of consistent mix of water and gesso. So now that's mixed I just want to um, start stippling the uh, gesso onto the board. Now this stippling motion is it's kind of you push the gesso around a little bit with a sort of brushing motion um, and then you sort of tap over the uh, the paint um, with sort of, sort of like tapping motions to sort of get a stippled sort of effect. Now this is important because um, the stippling creates a sort of rough texture or slightly rougher texture um, which will allow the subsequent layers of gesso to adhere better to the wooden board. So I just want to let that first layer of gesso dry for about 15 minutes and then when I take my other brush 
and just start painting a, a thin layer uh, here. It's just a horizontal uh, strokes. And I just want to cover the board and uh, let that dry again for another 15 minutes. So I'm just uh, mixing some more gesso with the water and what I'm doing here now is just I'm going to cover the uh, paint the next layer of gesso and this time it's going to be in um, sort of vertical strips. Um, so again I just wait 15 minutes and then I go back to um, doing another layer but this time it's horizontal. So you want to paint at least uh, six thin layers of gesso over the original uh, stippled layer. And you want to make sure that you're alternating from uh, vertical to horizontal between every layer. And also you're going to make sure that you're waiting 15 minutes between uh, applying each layer. Yeah, you'll find as well that while you're waiting for the various layers to dry that um, your gesso mixture will again become sort of um, sort of hard and gelatinous so again you just want to put it over the double boiler and just gently uh, heat it up until it becomes uh, liquid again. So after applying the uh, six layers um, it should just be a very nice white radiant surface and you shouldn't be able to see any of the uh, wood grain underneath. So you just want to let that final layer dry for about 50 minutes and then it's now ready for scraping and smoothing. Now the tools I'll need for scraping the board is a uh, glass scraper here, also a single edged razor blade and uh, some sandpaper, some 400 grit. Now the first thing I just want to get a fresh single edged razor like this and I want to just um, smooth off the two ends of the razor and I just want to sort of make a sort of smooth um, sort of bevel curve on uh, both sides of the razor and I'm just doing this by sort of uh, pulling the edge of the razor blade on the sandpaper and I'm just sort of curving the, uh, the razor blade upwards as I'm doing it to get a sort of nice smooth sort of uh, beveled edge. So just like what you can see there. So what I want to do now is just put a slight burr on the edge of the razor blade so that it sort of curls back ever so slightly. And uh, I just do that by placing the razor blade vertically on the sandpaper and just gently pushing forward um, in one direction. So this will create an ever so slight burr on the blade. So if you feel on one side, it should be smooth. And then on the other side, there should be a slight sort of a sort of slight ridge that you can feel with your finger. So now I'm happy with that. I just want to load the razor blade into the scraper and uh, I also want to make note of uh, which way uh, the, the burr on the blade is facing because uh, that will be important when I come to scraping the, uh, the gesso board smooth. Okay so I have my uh, gesso board here and um, I have my scraper. Um, I should also let you know as well that if you don't actually have a, a glass scraper to hand, you can use a, a palette knife like this one. Um, basically, you just want to hold the edge of the uh, palette knife to the board at a sort of 45 degree angle and just start gently scraping away at the gesso. But because we have a scraper, uh, we're going to use it. Now, uh, remember to check first um, where the, the burr on the blade is and you want the burr sort of facing towards you sort of scooping down and towards you so you want to get your scraper and uh, hold the uh, the edge of the blade to the board and at a sort of 30 30 degree angle or so you just want to smooth smoothly start scraping 
uh, the, the board. So you just want to hold a little bit of pressure on the board and just make uh, sort of 10 centimeter or so sort of uh, movements down the board. Now you want to sort of go all over the board in these movements, um, just gently scraping and scraping. Um, you don't want to spend too much time on one area. And you also want to scrape in a sort of uh, crisscross uh, motion. So first you scrape uh, horizontally for a little bit and then you scrape uh, vertically for a bit and then just keep alternating until uh, you achieve a smooth surface. Um, you'll also see as well that um, sort of gypsum and zinc dust is um, starting to, to build up in these lines on the board. Um, it's good also to have maybe a um, vacuum cleaner uh, handy just to suck up the, uh, the dust because it, it's it does get very very dusty after a while. And you also want to avoid sort of um, scraping dust back over the scrape surface because you might accidentally um, create some small scratches as well with the dust. Okay, so now I've scraped the board as um, smooth as I think I can make it. Um, what I can then do is uh, take a very slightly damp uh, linen rag and w with that I can just um, sort of rub it all over the, uh, the board and uh, just polish it and that will get rid of uh, like sort of very very small scratches. Um, you also want to make sure that it's not too damp because if it is uh, it'll start sort of taking off parts of the gesso. So yeah, just very, very slightly damp. Now, one trick to uh, check the smoothness of the gesso board is to take some uh, charcoal powder. Um, you can get that just by um, sanding some charcoal sticks. Um, put a little bit on a uh, paper towel and just um, rub the board with uh, the charcoal. And uh, what that will do is um, it will get all of the charcoal into the sort of unsmooth bits. So it will sort of highlight uh, the sort of the still rough parts of the board. So if you can s see here there are these sort of grey streaks or sort of, sort of light grey patches so that's where the charcoal has sort of uh, got into the uh, rough parts of the uh, gesso board so basically you just want to start scraping those areas until the, the grey goes away. Okay, so I've uh, scraped and scraped until all those little sort of grey patches have uh, disappeared and now I can be pretty sure that this is a nice smooth gesso board. So I've let the board dry for at least a day. Now there just remains one more thing to do to uh, the gesso board and that is to temper it. Now tempering is a sort of way of um, sealing the uh, the gesso because a gesso especially if it's made with gypsum it's quite sort of porous and absorbent so that means that if I put paint or sort of any other sort of material on top it'll sort of start to absorb it and you don't really want that to happen because you want the gesso to sort of keep its uh, whiteness and its uh, luminosity um, so the idea is with tempering we sort of seal seal off the uh, t uh, the gesso from the subsequent layers which are going to be put on top of it and we can do that with uh, shellac varnish so this shellac varnish I've got here is um, it's colorless or oh, it's very very light so it won't um, color the gesso all that much now I just want to give it one coat of uh, shellac but before I do that I just want to wipe down the board with a damp uh, paper towel 
and uh, just want to get rid of any residual dust that still might be on the board. So I'm just using uh, my universal brush here and I'm loading on the shellac quite thickly. And yeah, so I just want to cover the board with one coat of shellac. So now that um, coat is dry, I just want to take some fine sandpaper, the 400 grit again, and I just want to uh, smooth out uh, any parts where sort of maybe there's been some uh, brush marks or anything like that, so, so that I get a nice smooth finish. And with that sanding completed, the gesso board is now finished. Right, so that is the gesso board finished. Uh, the shellac is dry and now it's ready to paint on. So I think the whole process really was rather labor intensive, but the results are really nice actually. It's very, very smooth and um, it's well, very white and it's, um, which is what, really what you want for a very good um, gesso grounding because you want the, uh, the whiteness to um, sort of shine through all the subsequent layers of paint that I'm going to put on top so it'll help create a sort of luminosity to the whole painting which is what I really want to achieve if I'm trying to do a Holbein uh, style of painting. Um, I think it's really the gypsum that I put in the mix which helps a lot with the uh, luminosity. I think the luminosity wouldn't be as good if, if I was using say um, marble dust or chalk instead of the gypsum. And also I found using the gypsum meant that I was able to scrape the board smooth. Um, if I was using marble dust or chalk, I'd have to sand it. And I found that uh, the scraping process, um, while it, you had to be quite careful and methodical, you got a really good smooth result at the end. So um, yeah, anyway, so I hope you enjoyed that. And, uh, Leave any comments or maybe tips as well in the comment section and I'll be uh, sure to get back to that. So in the next video we're going to be doing the drawing which uh, I will then eventually transfer onto the board and then paint. So uh, stay tuned for that and uh, I'll see you later. Bye bye.